You're listening to Three Kitchens Podcast, hosted by Aaron Walker and Heather Dyer. Tune in weekly to get inspired and make good food. All right, folks, welcome. Once again, welcome back to Three Kitchens Podcast. I had a little pause there. Welcome to... Uh, Where am I? (laughs) Hello? Is this thing working? (laughs) Testing? Testing? Three Kitchens Podcast. My name is Heather, and I'm here with my friend Erin. Hey! (laughs) Hey there. Hey, everybody. Would you like to make the easiest no-bake, that's why it's easy, no-bake, raspberry chocolate tart i'm ha- i'm leaving you hanging for <laughs> you sure are <laughs> i'm like do you need me uh, to repeat that would you like to make erin no she doesn't know yet i think she, i do she hasn't decided yet because she hasn't heard what's in it is that what it is no i was just trying to make you nervous <laughs> i'm just being a jerk <laughs> This tart is super easy. I have made it a couple of times in the past Mm. and it looks really pretty. So when you have people over, you can bring this out and it looks really impressive and it's also tasty. I think all tarts look amazing. I don't often make tarts. I don't know why. I think I should get into tart making, but they always look gorgeous. Like anytime someone brings a tart out, it's always like, I don't know. Okay. We're not talking the little individual size tarts, like a... True enough. Good point. There is a difference. A a little single, I don't even know how you describe it. Like a little mini tart. tart. (laughs) Yeah. Like if you're making a butter tart, for example. That would would be be the best example. Yes. Yeah. This is like the size of a pie. Mm Mm-hmm but it's a tart. I don't know why we have to have different names for everything. (laughs) So Heather, why don't you tell us why a tart's a tart and not a pie? I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe I can look that up and tell you on the second half. Damn it. Yeah, I'll I'll find something to say about that maybe. Or I'll forget and then we just won't talk of it again. (laughs) So do you bake your tart in a tart pan? Okay, this this is a no-bake First of all, it will not be baked. Oh, but even the crusty part? What's going on? Okay. Let's check it out. Let's check it out. It's I guess I have more questions than I thought I did. It's been a minute or 17 since I've made this. So let me, I remember eating it. I don't remember making it as much as, <laughs> so let's review. Perfect. I own two tart pans. So you have the outer rim and then you mm-hmm. have a flat circular or whatever shape piece that goes into it. Mm-hmm. So when you when your tart is cooked, you kind of push it from the bottom and pop it out. Right. So you have the nice little crimped edge. It has a very nice crimped edge. Yeah. Yeah, but you don't have to dig it out. No, that's true. You can cut right yeah. through the side. I have a circular one and I have a rectangular one. Cool. They look very nice. Okay, so let's review because I don't honestly remember. <sighs> okay. This one suggests a nine inch pan with the removable bottom, which I just talked about. Mm -hmm. You're gonna make your crust. So this one has a crust that's made with almond flour, cocoa powder, coconut oil, maple syrup, and a pinch of salt. And you mix everything together quickly so that you get a sticky kind of crumb. You press it into your pan. Then, hang on a second scrolling past a gazillion photos of it because it is pretty but you know oh God. okay you're gonna press it into your pan evenly you you know use a glass or something to really press it in there nice and flat and set it aside not baking it what all right yeah. then you've got chocolate that you're gonna chop up and then in a saucepan on the stove you're going to bring coconut milk just to a boil Okay. You're going to pour the hot milk over your chocolate. Is this starting to sound like ganache with coconut milk? Is it? Yeah. I don't, I've never made a ganache before. Okay. So <laughs> sure. Do, essentially. Yes, it does. <laughs> and then once it's starting to melt, you whisk it and stir it so that it's nice and smoothly melted all together. Mm. And then you're going to put in some raspberry jam. Ooh, yes. And that's your filling. And you're going to pour that onto the crust and that sets that's it and you're then you're going to put it in the fridge 
for about two hours and that's it. And then you can garnish it on, put fruit on top. You can put the fruit on while, like before it goes in the fridge, if you want it to kind of set into the chocolate or you can right. wait and do it after. You kind of, you can almost do it however, however you want. That's it. That's why it's like the easiest. It's no bake. It's gluten-free because your crust is uh, almond, almond flour, flour base. It's vegan. Yeah. And it sets? It does. Wow. I'm sorry. This is, you just made miracles happen. <laughs> <laughs> I, again, I haven't, I've seen you make this before, so I'm, I'm excited to try this. It's been quite a while, so I hope it works out. You know, sometimes mm. things don't set when you think they're going to set. <laughs> I just always have this like well, fear that this is going to be the time it doesn't set for whatever re mysterious reason. Yeah. I hope that doesn't happen this time because huh. it is really a delicious chocolate yeah. tart with very little work. It takes like 10 minutes, throw it together, and then just chill it until you're ready to go. This sounds amazing. Mm. So simple. I like simple. And Ooh. I like simple when it's Valentine's Day. Tomorrow's Valentine's Day. Oh, nice. So if you're yeah. last minuteing it, like we know most husbands are. <laughs> <laughs> are you the husband <laughs> listening and you're like, oh my God, I got to make something nice for dinner. There you, you go. got a two hour tart. Not to stereotype because some wives or girlfriends or, oh yeah, you know, might also be last minuteing it. Absolutely. Yeah. It's super easy. And one thing I would recommend, just based on, I'm remembering this now. Okay. Is to use a seedless jam. Okay. Remember the raspberry jam that you're going to mix into the chocolate? Right. It gives it like a, a different sweetness right. to your chocolate. And I think it's better if you don't have the seeds from the jam. Okay. okay. It just sort of then melts in. and You could always make your own raspberry mm -hmm. jam too and just mm -hmm. put it through just raspberries and sugar and water. And then put it through a strainer and push out all the good stuff without the seeds. Yeah, that's it. Super, super simple. It almost sounds too good to be true. <laughs> yeah. And this is the kind of dessert that I like because mm. it's like no fuss. So easy. You can't really mess it up. The decorating part is literally just putting fruit on top. You don't yeah. need to be good at decorating stuff, which every listener who's been around a while knows I'm not. <laughs> And that's yeah. okay. I own it. It's fine. And, uh, and you can make it ahead and have it in the fridge and be like, oh, at dinner time, well, happy Valentine's Day, everyone. And surprise, I made this beautiful thing. Well, I go. look forward to eating this. I'm hungry now. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> Hazard of the job. <laughs> Happens every time. Pretty much. Hey, listeners, if you're looking for a special cocktail to share with your Valentine, check out our episode from last year where we interviewed Natalie Migliorini from Beautiful Booze. She shared two fantastic drinks that would pair perfectly with this chocolate tart. As always, links to these recipes are in our show notes, and you can find them on our website, www.3kitchenspodcast.com. Happy Valentine's Day from Heather and Erin. All right, so we are back to talk about, um, hang on. <laughs> sorry, I shouldn't have started because I wasn't quite ready with my <laughs> recipe. Oh, there it is. Okay. All right. So earlier in the episode, Erin, you asked um, a totally logical and sensical question. What is the difference between pie and a tart? Yeah. And I was like, well, I, I don't really know. <laughs> so I took it away and did some homework. And I think you might find this entertaining as I did. Oh, I am really excited to hear this. Okay, so I came across a whole bunch of different definitions that really made no sense. Like Excellent. we're just like, uh, that actually doesn't tell anybody anything is what it came down to. Hmm. And so I was going to kind of give up on it. And then I came across this article on a website called pastrychef.online. So, so this person is writing the story of when she went to culinary school or paste, to be a pastry chef, right. and she gets to the class, the lecture was tart versus pie. And she was like, yes, I want to know. She was like you, she wanted to know what is the difference. Mm -hmm. And then she proceeded to quote her instructor 
and I just made some notes and I thought you might like to hear what they teach at pastry chef school. Awesome. So, tarts have short, thick-ish straight sides. Pies have deeper, thinner, slightly sloped sides. Okay. Tart pans look different from pie pans. Okay, very helpful. Pies have flaky crusts, but not all the time. Tarts have sandy, crumbly crusts, usually, but tarts don't have a top crust. Pies either do or they don't. Okay, is this all becoming clear? <laughs> oh yeah, I'm following this 100%. <laughs> Just wait, there's more. Okay, tart crust tastes better than pie crust because it's an integral part of the dish, says the professor. Oh. Do they call them professors at culinary school? I don't know if that's sure. what they're called. Anyway, I'm not sure. The chef, the chef said. Yes, chef. The pie crust is just there to hold the filling. All right, goes on to say, since tarts don't have a top crust, the fillings are beautifully arranged. Also, sometimes pies are pretty. <laughs> also, sometimes pies are pretty. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and one more thing. Since tarts have a higher crust to filling ratio, mm. Tart fillings are often richer than pie fillings, but not necessarily. And there are always exceptions to any rule. <laughs> okay, every one of those rules sound like an exception to itself. I know. So, uh, thanks. I want to go back to the one where the tart crust is integral part of where a pie crust is just meant to hold the filling. Mm -hmm. um, are you telling me I should be serving my pies sans crust then? Like... <laughs> I should be taking the pie out of the crust. It was just holding it there so that I could cook the filling. <laughs> well, I guess that's true. I guess then in that, with that logic, you could just put your filling into a pie dish and just right? take it. I should just be don't... dumping it out and scraping that crust off. And just serve it with a spoon. <laughs> don't bother with the crust in the first place. Then it's just a pie plate of filling. It's not a pie at all. Anyway, I, I found is... this whole thing really amusing. <laughs> Okay, then from a personal perspective, because I feel like we can't just leave everybody with pies and tarts are different, but sort of the same, but also not. <laughs> um, we can't just leave people with that. Like, what are you talking no, about? No, I am now I am now the authority. So <laughs> okay. you all know <laughs> the points that I agree with the fact that the tart crust is more like crumbly and grainy whereas a pie crust is like a flaky pastry mm -hmm. that resonates with me as the biggest difference I would think between pies and tarts but if you have a handheld tart like a mini tart I don't know what you would call it a tart like a butter tart it holds together is a pie because it's, it's made from pastry but we call it tart yeah but it's really like a hand pie but it's called a tart. open face yeah i know it's not <laughs> the whole i'm thing thinking of like full plate so tarts okay a full plate tart and the whole ratio of filling to crust i would mm -hmm. say for sure in a pie there's much more filling to crust whereas in a tart it's more evenly the filling and the tart is much more evenly paired those would okay. be the things that i especially if there's a top crust yeah, because the right. tart for sure doesn't have as much depth. Like my tart pan versus my pie yes. pan, the height isn't there for there to be a significantly larger amount of filling to crust. Mm -hmm. That's true. Those would be my personal feelings, semi-supported <laughs> value statements <laughs> on oh. pies versus tarts. That is that is funny. Okay, I didn't even get into like a galette, which oh, is... Oh, yeah. A French, like an open faced pie where you don't put your crust into a mm. pan, you lay it flat, basically, you put your filling and you sort of just fold over the edges of it. And then mm -hmm. it's open in the middle. Mm -hmm. And it's more rustic. But that a galette, I would say that's a pie, you typically use a pie crust. Yeah, but it's not deep. No, it doesn't have a top crust. <laughs> the whole thing just really cracked me up. I have to say much to think about. At the end of the day, it's kind of subjective. I think so. Mm -hmm. I don't want to. <laughs> I don't even really we don't want to go. Want to bring another piece into this? Okay. So <laughs> now that we have educated everybody, <laughs> now that everyone knows exactly what is a now, pie and what is a tart, exactly. Why don't we talk about how to make this vegan chocolate no bake? 
chart. Let's talk about it. All right. First, you're going to, this is just so easy. You won't even believe how easy it is. I still don't believe you. You're going to make your crust with 144 grams of almond flour, which is about one and a half cups. Yeah, yeah. 21 grams of unsweetened cocoa powder, which is about a quarter cup. 50 grams of melted coconut oil, which is about a quarter cup. Okay. And 20 grams or a tablespoon-ish of a liquid sweetener like maple syrup or honey. Mm. Take your pick. Okay. And a pinch of salt. And you're just going to mix all that together. Okay. What's a pinch of salt? I pinch it with like three fingers and my thumb. Okay. Is that what you do? I do two fingers and my thumb. Mm. Interesting. Okay. Continue. (laughs) I, I always figure a pinch is also subjective. It's like, it depends how big your hands are. It depends, you know, how coarse it is or how finely ground, or do you just do a couple of twists on your grinder like i mean right? well i don't i don't think you should worry too much about it either i don't think so but i always like seeing what things we can compare and how we judge something yes, because that's true. we're not trained in any way so we're just kind of going at it so that's right what's your perspective <laughs> um okay you're going to press this into a tart pan that has a removable bottom mm. so right there's the other thing that is very that's specific different to the tart. Pie. Yes. So it could be round. I've made it in a round before and you could do a rectangle like I did this time. Mm-hmm. The removable bottom is so you can just pop it out of there and it looks beautiful all in one piece when you take it out. It makes it a lot easier to cut and get out of there yes. because the edges of a tart pan are crimped. Mm-hmm. And it's a bit tricky to get it out of the pan if you don't remove the yeah. from the pan. Because yeah. on a pie, you have the flat edges and then just the top of the crust where it hangs over or rises above that is crimped. Whereas like the entire side of a tart has that wavy. Yeah, it's crimped. Yeah. You also want to lightly grease that pan, which makes it easier to come out. And sticking with a vegan dessert, you could use coconut oil there too. Perfect. Um, so you're going to press it in there quite firmly so that it is level and it's around all the edges kind of push it into the crimped edges along the bottom Mm -hmm. set it aside okay next you're going to make your filling finely chop your chocolate which is 170 uh, grams preferably bittersweet i had semi-sweet chocolate which is not it's sweeter than bittersweet chocolate right the semi-sweet one that i had i'm pretty sure because it tasted sweeter to me okay than when i've made it in the past Pick your chocolate, friends. Honestly, there you go. 170 grams, about six ounces, finely chopped. I made the mistake this time of leaving a few bigger chunks in there <laughs> that did not melt. Who cares? I mean, at the end of the day, if you get a chunk of chocolate in your pie, it's fine. I mean, your tart, sorry. Um, Whoa, that was a slip. <laughs> <laughs> so you've chopped up your chocolate. It's ready to go. You put it into a bowl. You've got a right. small saucepan and you're going to bring just to a boil 114 uh, grams or about half a cup of full fat coconut milk. Just till it's boiling, take it off and pour it over the chocolate and then let it stand mm. for about a minute. Okay. And you're going to stir it until it's creamy because the chocolate is melting. Mm-hmm. Helps mm-hmm. to stir it around. Then you're going to whisk in your raspberry preserves, about a quarter cup or 80 grams. Make sure you get the 100% fruit, like you want the flavor of fruit out of this. Could be homemade jam, could be store-bought. I actually bought seedless raspberry jam. So it's like a raspberry jelly, essentially. Okay, yeah. You're going to whisk that into it and then pour the filling into your crust. And if you want to put fruit on top, like raspberries, or I had a few strawberries and raspberries, you want them to kind of sink in a little bit to the top before you put it in the fridge to set okay you could just leave it plain if you want to but you're going to let it set and cool in the fridge for at least a couple hours or longer and then that's it you're just going to slice it up and serve it and i think you could then if you have some beautiful if it's the time of year for edible flowers from your garden those would be really beautiful on there isn't that a fun idea you could mix up the fruit i've seen photos that have like beautifully cut dragon fruit 
or like oh, yeah. kiwi would look really cool. You would leave those till yeah. you're serving it, I think, if it's a more juicy kind of mm -hmm. fruit. Mm -hmm. Berries are pretty safe. And that's it. You can cover the whole thing or just part of it. I did a little couple little swirls with some white chocolate on there just to kind of experiment. And well, yeah, have fun with it, right? That's the whole thing. I can't get over how simple this is and how it just sets. Mm -hmm. That's great. You're essentially making a ganache, like I think I mentioned earlier. Normally, you would use cream and chocolate. Oh, Hot okay. cream over chocolate, whisk it together. But the coconut milk sets a little bit differently. I think it's a bit softer than okay. if you were to use dairy in this. Mm -hmm. But I really like the flavor that the coconut brings to it and the yeah. jam. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, as I was coming in the door, it slipped <gasps> out of my hands. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and the whole container went bounce and then turned upside down. Luckily, oh. it didn't open. It was all oh, good. Okay. <laughs> but it was messy. <laughs> but it kind of... <laughs> <laughs> it was not a solid tart no more however that didn't change how delicious it tasted <laughs> mm -hmm. i grabbed a fork my husband grabbed a fork and he said tell heather happy valentine's day this is delicious <laughs> <laughs> those were really good flavors in there i really liked it even though you used a sweeter chocolate i didn't think it was too sweet for some reason, I was surprised by the darkness in the crust. Oh. And when you were talking, I realized that I thought you meant like coconut, not cocoa powder. Oh, oh, okay. It's a chocolate crust and a chocolate tart. Yeah. But listen, if you really wanted to, this one specifically is like gluten-free, dairy-free, vegan. It's designed to cater to everybody's <laughs> dietary requirements but if you don't have that concern you could use something else for the crust like we've all made you know graham cracker butter mm, melted yeah. crust on the bottom of a tart or a pie mm -hmm, you could do mm -hmm. that too yeah i like the texture that the almond flour gives to it mm -hmm. it gives something a little bit different in the i think it's like soft it's like soft yeah. and chewy kind of mm -hmm. whereas Sometimes the other ones can be a little bit too crumbly. This holds together a bit better. Mm -hmm. And if you should drop your tart on your way home, it didn't totally like <laughs> it was in pieces, but it wasn't like it was totally shattered and just crumbs and stuff. And like, I was like, oh my God, what is this going to look like when I open it? <laughs> and the fear is always like when you go, you put your hands under that tart mm. pan and you yes. want to pop it up out. And the fear is like, is it gonna come out in one piece of it? Like you get a little nervous, like you're worried the edging. So it holds together well. This crust, when if you press it right in there and let it yeah. sit while you do the rest, it holds, it pops out nicely, it looks pretty. It's like, it just works. So I saw somebody taking a tart out of a pan like that. And what they had done is they had put two glasses upside down mm. on the countertop so that they just had to hold the edge of their tart pan and put it on there and then they could kind of work around and then just let the outer mm, edge of the that. pan yep. come off and then the tart was just sitting and they could pick it up from there so yeah i haven't That's tried idea i haven't made enough tarts i love a tart i love a good tart <laughs> and now for the fine print join us over on the socials Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and on our website at threekitchenspodcast.com. Remember, when you like, follow, subscribe, and leave us a review, it helps more people find us. Thank you so much for listening. Pies and tarts for 400, Alex. Oh, oh like yeah. Jeopardy? Nobody would get <laughs> the category.